This video is sponsored by Helicon, one of the best open source platform for logging, monitoring, and debugging your large language model applications. Today, I want to show you how can you make your cursor workflow 10x more effective to build a production level application with much less errors. If you don't know what cursor is, it is the most popular AI code editor that everyone is learning. It enables anyone, even an eight year old, to be able to build a fully functional application using just natural language. And we saw many wild examples just from past week all around internet where people showcase beautiful application that they have been building with cursor. But the moment you start building with cursor app yourself, you probably start encountering countless errors and very hard to get things actually up running. And if this is your experience, the good news is that there are many things you can do to actually dramatically improve the success rate. For example, instead of giving cursor a simple instruction to build out the whole web application, you actually need to learn how to write the best documentation to communicate and align with cursor. What are the core functionalities? How does end file structure should look like, including code examples, and listing out all the dependencies. Or it might be a bit unclear of which tech stack that you should be using and how does cloud, v0, and cursor fit together into a cohesive workflow and when to use which one. With all those tips and best practice workflow, I was able to dramatically improve success rate for my own projects. So I'm going to show you step-by-step step what does my workflow look like so you can replicate and build your next dream app. And the example application I want to show you how to build today is a really interesting AI analytics platform called Gummy Search. It basically utilizes what large language model is really, really good at, which is reading through thousands of unstructured Reddit posts and summarize, extract key information like what kind of pain points people are struggling with and what kind of opportunities might be for solutions that people are asking for. And I learned about this app from one of the Greg's video where he showcased how he used Gummy Search to find startup ideas, which I highly recommend. And what got me really interested in to use this as example is because getting large language model reading through huge amount of unstructured data and extract insights can be utilized for many other data sources apart from just Reddit. Like you can probably build application for Twitter, Facebook group, Discord, or even private data source that you might got somewhere else. So today I will showcase how can you use cursor to review such social media analytics platform where it can research thousands of posts and summarize and extract key information for people to find opportunities with a full backend setup as well as integration with large language model monitoring platform so you can optimize cost. So let's get started. So to get started, instead of jumping into cursor directly, ask it to build something out, we need to do some planning. The first thing is we want to scope out a little bit about what kind of core functionality we want to ship. My process is to spit out the core scope the application has to have to be useful. Then I'll do some quick research, maybe talk to ChatGPT to understand what kind of like package that I can use for core functionalities. And in the end, I will get cloud or O1 model to design the project structure folder so that I can plan ahead based on all the requirements I have and then write out the detailed requirements. So in our specific case, I will create a new GitHub repo called Reddit Analytics Platform. Then I will start creating a instructions.md file. And normally I will start with a file structure that looks something like this. I will give a project overview and then start spit out the core functionalities, including documentations of packages that we're going to use and current file structure so that I can ask O1 model to plan a little bit. So in your case, you can probably follow a very similar structure, especially if you're building a web application. For project overview, I'll just give a brief description that you are building a Reddit application platform where users can get analytics of different subreddits, where they can go and see the top contents as well as the category of posts. And you will be using Next.js 14, ChatCN, Tailwind, Lucid Icon. And in terms of tech stack, so Next.js is just one type of frameworks that we are using, similar to React. And ChatCN is a UI component library, and Tailwind is a CSS library where it will make the code more easier to understand. And Lucid is an icon library that we can use. But if you want to use other component library, you can just change it here. And then I'm going to start fleshing out the core functionality. This is probably the most important part. You basically want to think through what are the core functionality that this app has to have. In my case, if I use Gummy Search as the reference, we need a page to actually view all the subreddits that are available. A user can create a new subreddits if they need. And then we also need a part to view all the details for specific subreddit. And from my experience, the most useful part of Gummy Search is the theme where I can see the top content as well as a category about which posts where people talk about solution requests, which posts they talk about pain and anger. And something we can even do more than Gummy Search is that sometimes I have very specific type of posts that I want to find. So I want to enable people maybe add a new category as well. So in my case, I will have a few different functionalities. One is the ability to see the list of available subreddits and add a new subreddits. And it need to display a subred page 
Uh, and we also need to fetch the post data in the top posts tab, as well as using OpenAI to analyze the post data into different category themes. And in the end, a bonus point to add new theme category. And what I will need to do after, I basically just need to spit out all the detailed interaction that I can think of. If this is your first time writing a detailed product doc, it probably will take some time, but it will be worth it. So in my case, I will write down the details that a user can see a list of available subreddits that are already created, displayed in cards, common ones like Olama and OpenAI, and users can click on add a Reddit button, which should open a model for users to paste in Reddit URL and add. And after user adding a Reddit, a new card should be added. And in subreddit page, uh, clicking on each subreddit should go to Reddit page with two tabs, as well as other details that you can pause the video and type out later. And after this core functionality, next thing we want to do is to find the libraries and packages that we're going to use to build out some functionalities. So there are two types of documents I will need to include. One is some code example for how do we get Reddit data. So there are a few ways I can go. The easiest way is that you can go and ask ChatGPT, especially for functionality like this one, where Redditor is not a new thing. You should already have training data about how to implement things for Reddit. So I can just go and ask, I'm building a web app using Next.js for fetching Reddit post data. What is the best package to use? Then you can see it's give me an answer where SnowWrap seems to be one of the best packages to use. And then I can go to npmjs.com to search for that specific package. So NPM is like the package manager, which we're going to use to install those packages later. So in here, it gives us some examples and also link to the detailed documentations, which we can take a look to get more details. And one thing I would normally do is I would start using cursor to give it documentation and try to spit out some proof concept of this functionality that we want. So I will just copy this one, go back to cursor, open the cursor composer, and then I will add mention uh, doc where I can click on add new doc, pasting the uh, link here. So it will add in the documentation of the snow wrap. I will confirm. And then in here, I will give a specific instruction. Help me build a simple TypeScript file of fetching recent Reddit post data from past 24 hours under Olama, including title, content, score, number of comments, and date using snow wrap. So you can see it start creating example uh, script. So I can accept all. And the first thing is I will need to get the Reddit API credentials. So you can keep asking it about like, how do you get a uh, Reddit API credentials, but you will basically go to reddit.com slash preference slash apps. And then you can click on create another app and give a name. So in your case, I will call it post categorizer and I will need to choose script description. We can put an app that analyze Reddit posts and about URL, we can keep empty redirect URL. I will just keep localhost 3000 and click on I'm not a robot and create app. And now you will get a credential here. So I'm just going to temporarily replace the credential and the user agent, you can just put whatever. Client ID will be the tax here and the secret ID will be this one. And here it asks for the refresh token as well. But I remember Snow Wrap offer a few different ways to OWASP. I just want to make an easy one, which using the username and password. So I'm going to copy this one and replace the refresh token to be username and password, where I can put in my username and password in. Next is I want to install npm. So I'll copy the command line in terminal and then do ts node fetch reddit post.ts. Okay, cool. So you can see that it does return actual post data back. So this code example is actually working. And then I can just copy paste this thing as a code example. And again, just taking away another layers of potential errors from this process by doing some research early on. So what I'll do is I will copy this code example in and go back to the instruction.md and put an example here. It says documentation of how to use snow wrap to fetch Reddit post data. So code example and paste this in. And I will also get description that we will use snow wrap as a library to fetch Reddit data. And I will basically do the same thing as documentation for how to use OpenAI structure output to categorize the Reddit post as well. So I will go to OpenAI documents, copy the link in, go back to cursor, add a new one, and add doc, and new one, paste in, OpenAI structure output, confirm. And here I would say instruction, help me write a simple TypeScript to categorize the Reddit post. It should have output post category analysis where it has Boolean value with Boolean basically is like true and false value for each category below. Solution request, ping and anger, advice request, and money talk. So I will click enter. So it created a simple script for me. And I can just come here and temporarily replace the API key here. I do notice the code here is actually not using the structure output. So I'm going to actually give a very specific example uh, that I get from the documents. 
And this is kind of another reason why I think this type of in advance planning research is necessary. So I will just go back to cursor and then say, I want you to use the open AI structured output function. Use the example above as reference to refactor the code. Uh, and uh, if I come back now, you can see that it used the uh, uh, structure output now, even though the model is wrong. So I will change this to be for all mini. But I will also just do some quick updates because I don't really like the structure. I wanted to put a description to the actual Zold data type here instead. So I can just choose this part of code. So I can just go back to cursor, composer, and I want you to set a description of each category to Zold model itself instead of part of prompt. So later it will be more flexible if categories change. Okay, now it should be all good. So I will open terminal, npm install openai and zot, and then do ts node categorize post.ts. Okay, I got this arrow. Okay, looks like it didn't add the beta here. So I'm going to paste in the beta according to the documentations. Okay, another problem I found earlier was that TypeScript have very strict return type. And previously the return type was defined as the type we defined earlier, but the actual thing we return here is string. So I just remove that and we can run again. Cool, now you can see it returned this results properly. So this is also an example we can include into the instruction. So our add documentation for open AI structure output code example. And I can also include the example output and example response. And at top, I will update uh, using OpenAI structure output functions. So this is pretty much the crux of the initial draft. The last thing I want to do is I want to include the current file structure. To do that, I will first need to set up the project. So to set up the project, I can go to chatsin. They have pretty good command line. I'll paste in npx chatsin at the latest initial. And it will ask me whether I want to create a new Next.js project first. I will click Y and then give a name, Reddit Analytics. And I will choose a New York style, natural, uh, yes. Then all the project has been created properly. So you can see a project folder has been created. Uh, what I want to do is that I actually want to firstly create a folder inside this project folder called instructions and move this instruction MD under that folder. And now I do cursor Reddit analytics. So this will open cursor in that specific folder. Uh, if you don't have this cursor command line yet, you can command shift P and then select this shell command install cursor command. Otherwise, you can always just open that specific folder from here. But now I'm going to this specific uh, project folder and then open the instruction that we created earlier. So let's firstly install a few different packages that we know we're going to need. So npm install snowwrap, openai, and za. And next thing is I will create a new file called .env.local where I will add all the credentials in and also do npx chassis at latest add. So at default, the components from chassis won't be automatically added in. So I'm going to manually select the ones that we know we're going to need, like batch, card, input, label, sheet, table, tabs, and enter. Then you can see the components has been added. Then I will need to add the current file structure in. So we'll firstly do brew install trees. So this is a library that going to get a snapshot of the current file structure. So if you just do tree, it will return the whole file structure, which is not exactly what we need. Instead, I will do tree dash L, which means we will go just two layer down, which should be enough. And then dash I, which means ignore. So we don't want to include no module file. So now it will give me a clean file structure here. Uh, and I will copy this in Reddit analytics, and then paste this file in to indicate what does the existing project folder look like. So now what do we have here is a pretty decent starting point of the product requirement dot, but that's not it. To actually get a cursor produce really good result with less and less arrow, I actually want to give the initial PRD to uh, O1 model or cloud uh, to design what does the final project structure should look like, what kind of dependencies there will be, and write out the final PRD to fill in all the details. I personally found O1 is really good at writing and filling in those detailed docs. What I would normally do is copy the existing product requirement doc, paste it in here, and then at the bottom, and above is a project I want to build. How should I structure my project file? Try to create as few files as possible. Because I found when you have less files, cursor tend to have less arrows and click enter. So you can see the O1 model start syncing through a few different steps and then spit out a project structure file based on the requirements. And after that, I will give the second step, help me adding details to the original PRD that give clear alignment to developers who will implement this project. 
So don't create actual code, just a PRD, including file structure in the doc and all documents provided with both example code and response. Those are important contexts and click enter. Again, O1 model will start thinking through a few different steps and spit out a very detailed instructions of how this project should be created, as well as updated product structures and code examples. And in the end, it will give a very detailed breakdown of all the different components. Okay, great. So this is really decent product requirement doc. Uh, the only downside is you can't just copy paste in because it's not in markdown format. So normally what I would do is I go to cloud, paste this in, and then say, help me convert this to markdown. And then cloud will break that down into specific markdown files that I can copy paste in. Once it's finished, I will just copy this and paste into instruction.md and save. Okay, so this file should give cursor quite a good amount of alignment. So now I think we are pretty much ready to start getting cursor working on it. So only last thing we want to create a .env.local file and put in the credential of Reddit and OpenAI here. And now let's get cursor to start implementing this project. But before we dive in, I got a lot of DMs where people are asking for more in-depth tutorial of utilizing AI to build fully production-ready applications. And that's why I started a community called AI Builder Club where I'm spending lots of time every week adding really in-depth content of how can you use AI to bring your next startup ideas live. It includes step-by-step -step tutorial of how to build a real-world use case with AI, where I will share best practice prompt and code example that I use in every single project. And you can just copy, paste, plug and play, as well as some ready to use template for some common agents that you can build. And most importantly, you can go and post challenges and questions that you are experiencing in the community. Me or other community members will normally jump on and answering it. And you can also see some secret tips that other AI builders in the community have tried and worked well for them. If you think this is interesting, you can click on the link in the description below to join. And now we can start getting cursor to build out this application using the fully flash out documents. So I will do command I open cursor composer. So let's give instruction. Let's build a Reddit analytics platform based on instruction. Let's first say build 1.1 view available subreddits, enter. So you can see that it will create files in all the right place. And I will click accept. And we can try to run this by doing npm run dev. Okay, great. So you can see that the homepage already created, listing out all the subreddits available. Next, let's build 1.2, adding new subreddits. So you're creating new components under the components called add subreddits model. And it also asked me to add in those new components. I believe I already added, oh, but it looks like I didn't add the dialog. Okay, so I'm going to do npx chassis and latest add dialog. So now if I go back to localhost 3000, I can see this new button called add subreddit. If I click on that, uh, you can see the UI is a bit broken, uh, but we're gonna come back to UI later. Firstly, we just want to making sure everything works. So the functionality of adding subreddit seems to be there. And next, we're just going to move on to the subreddit detail page the navigation. Let's view the next part of subreddit detail page navigation. So it will basically create pages and uh, files based on the predefined structure. So if I go back to localhost and click on the specific Reddit page, you can see it navigate to that specific side page. And then I will ask it to move to the second part, adding the tabs. Great. Now let's view the next part. So you can see the beauty of predefined the product requirement doc like this is that you basically break tasks down into small steps that the cursor can take very well. And I will click accept all. So if I go back to the app and click on this, it will open the two tabs here as well. And again, I'm going to ignore the UI and just finish the functionalities. So I'm going to give instruction now. Great. Let's build fashion ready posts, uh, 3.1 data retrieval. So this should create a few different files and I will just click accept all and the refresh the page here. You will see there are, looks like there's some arrows in terms of the modules. So I'm going to paste the arrow into the cursor and help me resolve this arrow. So we might need to install these two uh, libraries or just go to the other terminal, install and I'll accept all. Now I can actually display the posts. Great, now let's build 3.2. Okay, after this, it looks like no content is displayed. So I'm going to go back. I can see loading posts show up briefly on UI, but later it disappear and no posts are displayed on the interface. Help me think through the root cause lesson step by step. So first, they try to add some additional loggings or accept this. 
It looks like it says no post found, which would be weird. My guess is maybe the API is set up incorrectly. So I can go to libraries, redis.ts and give feedback. Uh, it says no post found because this because reddit.ts is not set up properly. Okay, so it looks like the problem is at the client side versus server side, where the redis.ts file was executed on the server side, but the server reddit tabs component is client side component. So the solution here is that to get the data flow from server side API to the client side components. Given this observation, here are the potential root cause. The client side component might not be able to make a server side API call directly. So the solution here is it creating new API route to fetch posts. So now all the posts has been updated properly. And what I will do is I will quickly come here and then submit a commit, set up project and fetch Reddit posts commit. So I will come back to the cursor composer and also this is fetching Reddit posts now. Next, based on instruction, let's build the 4.1 post categorization. Uh, I will accept all and go back to this page, fresh. Okay, so it looks like here's arrow. I'm going to copy this arrow and uh, add to composer. Help me identify root cause and resolve this issue. Let's think step by step. And accept all. Okay, and next is I wanted to display categories as well. So I will say next, let's implement this 4.2 display categories. Okay, so it looks like this one issue that there's no actual categorizations displayed. So I'm going to go back to cursor and then give instruction back if categorize post and point actually working. Okay, if we go back to the reddit.ts, you can see again the endpoint here uh, of OpenAI is not exactly what we have in the instruction. So I will need to be more specific. I will go back to the instruction, copy paste the code example. I will accept all first and then add reddit.ts, paste the file in. The categorized post function is not implemented correctly. It has to be based on the documentation we provided in this instruction file. Please refactor the code. So I'll accept all, and I want to change this model to be full uh, mini. And I still observe a few uh, kind of weird parts. For some reason, it just keep uh, ignoring some specific part like beta. So I just need to manually uh, copy paste over those things. And okay, cool. So you can see that the category has been show up properly for each post. If I go to themes, I can click on each card and the relevant post will be displayed here. Great, so I'm going to add a commit again. Uh, categorize posts ready. So you can see the core functionality is implemented here. I can see the top posts. I can also go to themes page, filter out posts with specific categories. But for anyone who is launching large language model based application, you all got a new problem that you need to worry about, which is how do you monitor and alert the large language model usage and whether or not you optimize the cost structure there can really make a difference of whether your business succeed or not. I'll give you one example. A few months ago, I launched a AI girlfriend and back then I offered a 60 seconds free trial chat for every single user. Lots of people sign up, but somehow I just never make money from it. So I manually implement a bunch of trackings to understand the cost structure there. And later I realized for the 60 seconds free trial, if I have 1% conversion of all the users, I will need to charge at least $13 from each user to break even. So it's really a balance between the performance, cost, and speed. And the same case for this Reddit analytics platform. We kind of need to understand what is the cost of every single large learning model call to get those categories. And how many posts do we normally have under one separatus? That's why I normally will set up integration to large language model observability platform like Hedicon. So if you haven't heard about Hedicon before, Hedicon is an open source platform for logging, monitoring, and debugging large language model applications, where they give us ability to see exactly how people are interacting with our large language model application, track the cost, errors, and latencies so that we can optimize for the performance. And I can also do a bunch of very advanced and interesting things like automatic caching the response if the prompt is the same to save the cost and improve speed, send the customer properties so that I can segment different type of requests and many more. And the best part is it is extremely easy to set up. So if you are calling an open AI model like me, all we need to do is just adding this base URL and additional headers from our open AI clients. And that's pretty much it. I can just copy this over and go back to cursor open the reddit.ts, which is where we make the OpenAI call, and paste this in and add this environment variable header call. That is pretty much it. So now if I go to the Reddit platform and open a subreddit, after I get this response, it will automatically track that we made 200 large language model requests for that specific subreddit. 
And that probably means we processed around 200 posts. And those requests are from the same user based in Australia, which is me. And in total cost around one cent. So that now I know the cost to onboard a fairly popular new subreddit is around one cent using the GPT-4 model. And I can go to request to see the detail of every single request, as well as the actual prompt that we sent to OpenAI. And immediately I can spot the uh, problems in my prompt. For example, the structure now is actually not very clear what are the actual post content because some of the content looks like part of prompt and this might confuse large learning model. So I can immediately improve the performance by updating prompt here and save. But on the other side, they also have a UI that allow me to experiment with different prompt directly and also switch between different models. And for each data while I'm reviewing that, I can add this to a data set called bad sessions. And this allows me to create data set that I can use to either evaluate the new model or pipeline or fine tune the model. So I highly recommend that you set up your large learning model application with those logging and modeling platform. And Hedicon is one of the best ones. I have put the link in the description below for you to try out Hedicon for free. After we connect this to Hedicon, the next thing is we want to set up the backend. So we have the core functionality kind of implemented for this uh, Reddit analytics platform. But the annoying part now is that every time when someone click on this subreddit page, it will refresh all the subreddit posts and then going through the open AI to analyze and categorize posts, which is not optimal and going to cost a lot of money. So what ideally I want to do is that when someone open the page and fetch the data for the first time, I want to save this data on a database so that next time when someone else opens this page, we can check what is the last time we fetched data from Reddit. If it is within 24 hours, let's not update again. So to do that, we actually need cursor to implement a kind of new functionality to save the data somewhere. I want to showcase this because this is a great example to showcase how can you add new features to exist projects they already set up. So to do that, instead of just open the cursor and ask it to implement the whole project, I will actually open the side panel and add code base. So this is really powerful feature where Cursor actually allow us to reference the whole code base and I can specify certain files to include and exclude. For example, I probably don't want the node modules folder. So I'll put node modules folder. By the way, I don't know if putting the folder name gonna work, but I just gonna put it here. Uh, if you know the answer, please comment below, let me know. And I'm going to put detailed instruction. So I have this project built based upon the original instruction, but currently we need to fetch Reddit data and call OpenAI API every time when someone opened the sub Reddit page, which is not optimal. I want a backend engineer to connect it to Superbase and save the Reddit post data and AI analysis data to Superbase and only fetch data if the last update time is older than 24 hours ago. Help me generate detailed doc that can help backend developer understand this project structure what core cool parts to build for Superbase integration that compatible with this current project structure. No need to include actual code example, just the design doc. By the way, if you don't know what Superbase is, Superbase is an open source project that offers complete backend for both mobile and web application. It was introduced back 2020 and got popularity very, very quickly. Because before Superbase, you basically have two options for building backends. One is Firebase, another is AWS Amplify. Now they both kind of works, but the problem is they kind of lock you into specific vendors, which is not optimal. That's why Superbase grows so fast because it allows you to build backend and host anywhere you want. And they provide full backend service for database authentication, storage, and even vector storage now, and offer frontend SDK to connect to the backend very easily. And if you haven't built any kind of backend feature before, it might feel stunning, but it's actually easier than you saw. What you really need is kind of define what kind of data we actually need to store about your application. For example, in our case, we probably always want to have a table for profiles so that we can track the users. You can even add things like tier to tracking the pricing tier, how many credits they left, and Stripe customer ID and subscription ID if you are building the payments into the platform, uh, as well as subreddits. So we want to track the list of different subreddits and the last updated time. And list of posts, for each post, we want to track title, content, scores, and the list of categories. So you can basically think of them as spreadsheets. What kind of sheets you need and what kind of columns you need for each sheet. But if you don't know what specific columns that will be needed, don't worry. You can ask AI to help you figure out. So go back to cursor. So first thing I will do is I will open terminal and get file structure. Uh, so I will use the same command, but this time I will use uh, three layers deep. So this will give me uh, the latest file structure and I'm going to copy this over. And I'm just going to the instruction.md and update the file structure here. And then I'm going to copy this over to the instruction on the right side and give instruction. 
I have a project built based on the instruction.md, but currently we need to fetch Reddit data and call open an API every time, which is not optimal. I want a backend engineer to connect to Superbase, save each subreddit data to Superbase, and only fetch data if the last update time is older than 24 hours ago. Help me generate detailed documentations to help backend developer understand the project structure. What core parts to build for Superbase integration that compatible with the current project structure? And what database should we create? And what optimal schema should look like? Let's think step by step. And I actually want to use O1 preview model here directly and click enter. Okay, now it returned back a very detailed documentation where it talked about how the data currently flow. It also showed me the actual database schema design and data fetching logic, as well as detailed steps. So this is really good. Next thing is I actually want to convert this into a markdown file that I can get cursor to refer to. So I'm going to copy paste the whole thing and go to cursor. Help me convert this into proper markdown format. Okay, great. So I can copy this over, uh, go to instructions folder and create a new one called superbasesetup.md. Paste this is in. And we do need to update one part, which is the file structure. I will need to copy the latest file structure into here and save. And before we get into cursor, we'll need to do a few steps. Firstly, we need to install a super base client library, our open terminal and paste in. And then next we can start using cursor composer. So I'm going to open cursor composer and then say, we need to implement super base integration for this current project based on instruction here, super base. Firstly, to initialize clients, so enter. So you can accept all. And next is we need to add the credential into the .env.local. And to do that, we need to set up the Superbase project first. So I'm going to go to Superbase and create a new project. I'm going to give a name, Reddit Analytics, and give password. Okay, great. And after the project is created, I will go to project settings and API. Then here we will get the credential we need. One is the URL, another is service row credentials. And after that, we will need to create the two database table as well. So there are two ways you can do that. Either you can go to table editor and create a new table uh, by just typing the name of the table and adding the column based on the instruction. Or we can actually go to cloud and then give instruction. Give me the SQL command to create all tables in Superbase directly. Then it will give me the SQL code. I can copy and go to the SQL editor, paste it in, and then run. Okay. And after it's running, you can go to table. All those tables should be created already according to the instruction. So I'm going to uh, give the instruction grid. I've set up Superbase project table and added environment variables. Now let's do next step to initialize Superbase client and modify the data fashion logic. And I'm going to copy paste the specific part into here as well and click enter. So I'm going to click accept all and then do, let's do step six, update PR now and it'll accept all. Uh, and the next step, now let's test data flow. Okay, I can see I got a few arrows. So I'll paste those arrow in. Got this arrow after loading sub page, and I'll accept all. Okay, and thanks for the log before. I can see that we successfully fetched the data from Reddit, but got arrow actually absurding data. So it says couldn't find advice request. Okay, so I guess it probably referenced the wrong schema, even though it is including in the doc. So this time I'm going to be more specific, copy paste the actual specific schema in, and then copy paste this arrow in. I got this arrow seems fail to push data to super base. Please refer to the actual subred to actual tables and schemas we set in super base. Let's think step by step. Yeah, I'll save this. And if I refresh again, I got another arrow. So I'm going to copy paste in. I got this arrow after updating TS. Okay, and I'll accept. And we got another arrow here related to Superbase. So I'm going to copy paste in and enter. So it says that duplicate key arrow as well as category is not defined. So it is fixing those ones. Okay, cool. So I can see the post has loaded and uh, there are also uh, posts created, subreddit loaded, as well as uh, post categories. However, I do get its arrow and it looks like the issue is that for some reason, it kind of fetched the data twice. So I will go back to cursor 
and then copy paste this in. Everything seems working now. I can see data sent to Superbase. The only issue is that it seems that somehow we fetched the data twice after the initial fetch succeed. This led to error I pasted. What could be the root cause? Okay, great. So now I can see data is loaded properly on the front end. And if I create this page and come in again, you can see data load much faster because reading directly is from the super base. The only issue is that the comments data still seem to be loaded. Create ad data is not loaded. The category is also not loaded. So I'm going to go back to the cursor. So here I will give instruction that there are some issues for top Reddit posts. Comment created category data doesn't seem to load on front end. And for themes, no data is loaded too. But I can see in super base the data exists. What could be the root cause? Okay, so it gave me the answer, but for some reason, it didn't really update the file directly. So I'm just going to manually copy paste in. So you can just copy this function name, go to search, uh, and then you will find a specific file. So we need to update this part. I'm going to update this part as well as the return value. So I'll save this and the refresh. Okay, so you can see the comments data and the create data has been displayed properly. The only thing is the category data still is not pulling through. And let me just double check. I do think the post categories are created properly. So I will give instruction. Great. The created and the comments data are displayed now. However, no category data is loaded. What could be the root cause? Help me think through step by step. And what I also probably do, I will just copy paste the uh, comment we have about the schema. Above is the table details. We used to create a super base table as reference. So I will say, so I will paste in the actual SQL that we use to create table to give it more context and then tell it to uh, no category data is loaded. What could be root cause? Help me think step by step. And above is the reference. Okay, so it asked me to add in uh, the debugging info. So I just add it and then try to load the data again. So I can see that the post category looks something like this. So I will tell it post category looks like an array of object. I will paste it in like this. Okay, great. So everything is working now. Uh, I can see that it's added to Superbase and I can go back and click again, they will be loaded instantly. But if the first time I open something, it will load the data and sync all the data to Superbase. So this is actually how you can build a new feature on top of a project that already exists. And the last part I want to show you is how can you make your UI looks a lot better. So I'm sure you definitely heard about V0, which is kind of generative UI platform introduced by Verso. A lot of people are talking about it, but it might be not super clear to you about when should you use V0. From my experience, you can basically use cursor to build out the functionality of your application. And in the end, you can go back and ask V0 to make your UI looks a lot better. And it's a lot easier than you saw. I will show you how. So I will basically ask V0 to help me update UI page by page. For example, I will go back to my app and choose page.tsx, which is kind of like home page where I display all the Redis. And what I will do is I will basically just go to V0 and paste in the page.tsx. And then I will give instruction. I'm building a Reddit analytics platform. Above is homepage displaying all the subreddits available. Please keep the functionality exactly like above, but make UI a lot better. Remember, only changes UI do not change functionality and variables. So I will click enter. What it will do is that it will start spit out the UI. It might give you some error, but you can ignore that. I will just come here and copy paste this code and go back safe. You can see the UI looks a lot better and different. So this is basically how we're gonna update UI. We basically just need to change things bit by bit. So the next thing is I want to update the add subreddit button. So now I'm going to go back to components and uh, let's change add subreddit model button. So I'm going to copy things in. Above is uh, add a subreddit model and button. And again, I'm going to uh, copy the same uh, kind of code, same prompt here. Please keep the functionality exactly the same as above, but make UI a lot better. And once it's finished, I'm going to copy this over, paste in. Okay, one thing I did try again is add this part, making sure the same style as the previous page you created, so that things will be consistent. Uh, all right, I will copy this in, save. Okay, so now you can see the button is also in the same style as well. If I click on that, it will give me the kind of dark mode model. And next thing, I want to change those uh, cards that display in the subreddits as well. 
So I will go to subreddit's card. Basically do the same thing, copy those things over. And I will just copy exactly the same prompt. Okay, so the card has been created. Uh, I can copy this, paste in. Uh, great. Now the style you can see is the same as everything else on the platform. Next, I will go to the subreddit page. And then I will firstly go to the subreddit's page and paste it in and use the same prompt and uh, give instruction. Great. Above the subreddit page, displaying the detail of this subreddit analytics uh, and enter. Okay, once this is finished, even though it shows arrow here, but I'm going to ignore that and just copy this, paste in here. Cool. So you can see that the overall structure looks more and more similar. We only have a few things left. Subreddit tabs, uh, copy that in and paste over. Okay, still look a bit wrong, but I will just copy this code over and uh, go back to cursor, save it, uh, and go back here. Okay. It actually does look pretty good. It kind of blend into the dark mode, same overall. Um, the next thing I want to do is that I want to update table. So I will uh, go back to the post table, copy this and paste it over. Nice. So it looks a lot better now with the right color scheme and uh, uh, add some icon as well. Obviously you can prompt it further to get the right style you want. I'm just going to move on to the last part, which is same card. So I will paste this and paste in. Awesome. So you can see that now the UI is a lot more flesh out than before and everything looks a lot more cohesive. And obviously if you don't like the style, you can prompt V0 to change the style as well. Uh, but I would suggest you do at the very beginning. So this is how you can set up a fully functional web app with beautiful UI and backend setup. The last thing is that we actually want to bring this app live so the rest of the world can see it. And to do that, we're going to use Verso, which is company behind Next.js, and they made this deployment a lot easier. Uh, so you can basically go to Verso, create account, and choose this project GitHub repo, and going through the deployment process, which normally involves some kind of debug process as well. I'm not going to go into details. And if you want to learn details about how do you actually deploy the web app via Verso, you can check out the other video where I dive deep into every single step that's needed to pull your app live. I've put that link in the description below so you can check out. So this is some of the, my best practice workflow of how do I use cursor to build fully functional application by creating very detailed documentations. I hope you find this useful. I highly recommend to try it out and even build some kind of more advanced function that maybe chat with this Reddit data. And if you want to learn detailed things like how do you build user authentication with cursor, and how do you connect to Stripe so that you can charge different pricing tier? You can join my community, AI Builder Club, where I share a lot of tips and detailed prompts and code example of how to build AI applications. And each one of them has my best practice prompts that I personally use for every single project where you can just copy, paste, plug and play. Plus you get to connect with other AI builders who might already experience a problem that you are facing right now. So you can click the link in the description below to join my community today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I will continue sharing interesting AI projects I'm doing. So please like and subscribe if you want to keep update. Thank you and I'll see you next time.